Fantastic. Welcome to today's episode of Business Spotlight, where we are joined by Elliot Parnham of Skyfarer. Elliot, how are you? I'm great, thank you. How are you, Hannah? I'm really good, thank you. I'm really good. Let's dive straight in. Um, tell us what you do and how long you've been doing it for. Uh, so I'm uh, the CEO and founder of a business called Skyfarer Limited. We started in Coventry. Um, back in 2017, I started the ideation of this business um, after doing my undergraduate degree in aerospace engineering at Coventry University. Um, it's morphed and changed over the past five or six years um, into what it is today, which is essentially um, enabling access to drone services to society for the benefit of society working in things like medical logistics and emergency services support and trying to make that scalable, really, so that um, uh, people in the public and also key services uh, for the public can benefit from drone technology. And it's a really interesting and exciting arena at the moment, isn't it? Yes, no, it's uh, it's it's all very new, I'd say, to um, kind of day to day society. It's been used, obviously, in the military, um, mm -hmm. this kind of technology. And we're trying to really traverse from um, it being used in anger in that way to being used for positive, you know, um, drones for good use cases. It's kind of the, the, the tagline that we use. No, I, I think it's brilliant. I've been keeping an eye on it, actually. Um, I think it's because it's so prevalent in the news. Um, it would be amazing if um, we could deliver um, organs or blood or, you know, things that really needed to get to the hospitals quickly. Yeah. That that would be phenomenal, wouldn't it? Yeah, you know, and, and we've already proven that that's, um, that's, that's, that's something that drones can do. With our trials in the West Midlands, we, we brought time down from 45 minutes to about 16 minutes Wow. transferring between hospitals and that's kind of in a pathology use case so if you're if you're if you're giving your bloods in to get some testing um uh, in in one location that needs to go to a centralized lab so utilizing mm. drones to move your samples means that you can get results back in a couple of hours rather than um up to two days it can take at the moment absolutely gosh it is it's incredible tell me elliot what motivated you to start the business uh, nothing else to do. <laughs> um, so that is kind of a, a long, a long backstory to that, really. So I'd always wanted to be in the in the forces in the RAA, um, and I did a lot of things growing up uh, to, to to try and pave that way. But then when I went to university, I joined the air squadron, and I found out I didn't really like being told what to do, which would never work in the forces. <laughs> so that that started my kind of exploratory journey into figuring out what I actually wanted to do really. And then I worked at Triumph Motorcycles uh, as a quality engineer. And although it was an amazing experience and there's some amazing amazing people there, um, it, being siloed at a desk in one particular job wasn't something that I enjoyed. So the only option for me that I figured out in my third year with help from the Enterprise Hub at Coventry University is going down a route of entrepreneurialism. Mm -hmm. And um, kind of during that foundation of learning about being an entrepreneur and, and starting a business I kind of realized that a lot of the stuff that I'd done uh, growing up were actually quite entrepreneurial and um, it took me that long to figure that out so uh, at that point there wasn't really any other path for me there wasn't a career path or a military path um, so it's you know go hard or go home with starting a business and that's where that's where Skyfair was born really Amazing. Please tell me what were some of the things that you uh, that you did previously that were entrepreneurial? I've got a 13 year old who is very, very inventive. It's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Enlighten me. What was what was your what was the best thing that you did when you were younger? Well, I just did a lot of a lot of bits and bobs, really. I remember a time when I was I must have been about must have been about 11. And I started making a leaflet to do car washing where I used to live on the Isle of Wight. And I remember going around the doors and handing out this leaflet with uh, a bucket of water and a sponge <laughs> ready to wash someone's car. And I also went through a phase of repairing iPhone screens as well, which was quite early when we had like first and second gen iPhones mm -hmm. and iPod touches and stuff and kind of learned how to do that and started doing that on the side with my A-levels, my GCSEs and things. Amazing, destined, destined to be an entrepreneur, definitely. 
through your discovery of um, understanding that you, um, well, your self-awareness of, of understanding that you don't like to be told what to do and you don't like to be tied to a desk, now that you have the freedom and the flexibility, has it been everything that you hoped it would be? Well, I say that while I'm sat at a desk. <laughs> so <laughs> the metaphor doesn't really work. Um, I think, you know, at the start, I, 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 I started reading and, and listening to a lot of like motivational talks and um, it's all very positive, this image of a CEO and working for yourself and running a business. But um, there's actually a lot of hard graft that goes into it that you don't generally see that much of from the outside. Mm -hmm. um, and, it's, and it's only quite recently that I've been able to talk to other CEOs in our industry and, and in a different industries as well that, you know, these challenges, it doesn't really matter um, who you are, you know, starting a business is very, very hard um, and it needs graft. And we all kind of have, well, the ones that I've spoken to anyway, similar challenges on the front of it. You know, a lot of people are able to show that they're on top of it and they're very well organized. But in the background, they're having the same struggles um, that anyone else would have starting a business. Um, so the main thing that you know I've had to rely on is that energy that I had at the start to want to do something that was beneficial to society to provide fulfillment to myself and just remembering how much I didn't want to do that sort of standard career path and how this is this is really the only path for me um, and just you know being aligned to that vision that I started out with and using my new skills around engineering and and drones and applying that in a really positive use case to society and um, getting some fulfillment from that is really quite a key driver to this day when things are really hard and you're up late at night and uh, you're just knackered. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The perception of a of a uh, of a CEO of a uh, entrepreneur of a, of a successful business, I always think of the 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 swan, so serene on the outside, and then the legs are going ten to the dozen underneath. <laughs> And there's something to be said about getting um, business owners, entrepreneurs, CEOs into a room to share those experiences, um, just to break that barrier of, oh, everybody else is doing okay, and why am I finding it so hard? So that's really good that you've taken the initiative to, to do that. No, I think um, one of the most important things I learned at the start is to uh, be proactive in finding other people to support you, and you don't know everything. Um, because as an en particularly as an engineer, um, generally you you might think that you do know everything and you want to solve problems yourself. Um, so moving from an en engineer to an entrepreneur was a really quite a, quite a difficult challenge because I had to really open up very quickly. I was very very introverted. I still am really. Um, and talking, even in conversations like this or in front of people pitching and pre presenting, um, was uh, absolutely nerve wracking. Um, so. Uh, learning to to lean on people and finding expertise in er various areas and talking about the challenges um, has really been the only way I think that the business and myself has has grown to the point that it that it has is is by doing that. It's definitely not down to me the growth of the business. It's it's down to that support group and the team that we've brought in to do it. Yeah, yeah. You become the average of those they those you hang around with, they say. So, um, no, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing. Um, your industry, the aerospace industry, the drone industry is is exciting. It's emerging. It's evolving. Um, what do you do that makes you stand out? So what we're focusing on is uh, automating uh, unmanned aviation. So at the moment, we can see drones being used for what we what we call visual line of sight or VLOS inspection use cases where you have to have that drone within your site at all times when you're doing its operations. Um, but what we're looking at is what's called beyond visual line of sight or, or BVLOS. So for logistics use cases, that's absolutely vital because if you're going from A to B or Coventry to Rugby, um, you, you're not going to see that drone once it goes kind of over a kilometre away. So you need to have systems and process in place to make sure it's safe and then it does what it needs to do and carries that mission out in a logistics use case and also in a surveillance and inspection use case. Um, but going one step beyond that, we're not just looking at one drone going from there to there. We're looking at many different drones going from a central point 
and serving a regional network constantly, day in, day out. Mm. Um, for things like medical delivery with the NHS and private medical institutions and standard logistics, um, uh, kind of like spoke delivery and collection points, uh, also inspection for large national um, infrastructure like the, the grid highways and, and rail, um, mm. and then also emergency services support, so supporting the police, fire and ambulance with some of the activities that they do, which is currently covered by a big, a big, uh, a big helicopter. Um, so we're, we're diversifying um, the use of drones and making it accessible um, to society, really. Literally, as you were speaking now, I had this I had this vision of um, I know that above us there are aeroplanes passing over and it's incredibly busy. If you look at them, if you look at the uh, um, there's an app, isn't there, that you can look and you can see all mm. the all the aircraft movement. I can just picture that for drones. And having and, and actually being able to see it because it'll be closer to the ground. So I'm just um, um it's like back to the future made real. <laughs> it's kind of yeah, of no, the, the future is now when it comes to drone operations, but we're also conscious that we don't want to fill our most of the time beautiful skies in the UK in particular, um, with with drones. Um there's gonna be I think the way it's going to go is there's going to be set flight paths for this this kind of activity. It's not going to be yeah. anywhere and everywhere. It's not going to be over the cities initially. Um, uh, so you know that that whole thing is going to be is going to be managed for sure. It's incredibly exciting. It's so exciting. And as you say, if you can, with the amount of time that you can shave off um, with delivering um, to the hospitals with blood and organs. Um, halving the time, I think uh, you mentioned earlier, is just is just where we need to head isn't it is where we need to go um you mentioned earlier about how when you started um the this the idea of sky fair has changed and evolved and you've also mentioned how you attribute some of your growth to those that you um those that you have in your in your circle of influence um is there anything else that you can pinpoint that has aided and um contributed to the growth and the evolution of sky Wow. Well. I think there's been a lot of luck, actually. Um, there's been so many, there's been so many times where I thought in a couple of weeks or next week this business is no longer going to be going to be here, um, uh, and there's there's probably a few reasons for that. So we're working in an industry where um, we're heavily regulated, and that regulation doesn't exist for what we want to do just yet, um, but it is coming around. So commercializing what we do is very very difficult, and it's kind of I guess it's like any kind of innovation really uh, it's a difficult thing to to commercialize when you don't have the, the standards to be able to do it just yet and it's such a risk averse industry so we've had to do a lot of out, out of the box thinking to ensure that we can um grow as a business as that regulation starts to develop mm. um so we've had to we've had to go into sort of understanding how we can raise grant funding um and also investment we've done two rounds of investment um, previously, um, and we're doing another round of investment now to get to market. And we we see kind of a key inflection point in the UK in particular being at around 2024, 2025, so next year and, and beyond. And we're part of a project called Skyway, which is backed by Innovate UK. Okay. Um, it's, uh, it's in the Future Flight Challenge, and it's all about creating a highway in the sky um, that's eventually going to spread from Coventry down to Southampton um to support with distribution utilizing utilizing drones so um i guess a uh, long way of answering the question there's been uh, a heck of a lot of challenges mm. um and a lot of it is is around funding um but we've been quite fortunate sometimes at the very last minute to receive backing from um investors kind of within our industry that have kind of seen that this is something that is absolutely inevitable yeah. um and needs some support in these early stages whilst the regulation is starting to develop yeah how close are we do you think how close are we to um to seeing and and to actually having the um skyway and seeing drone in, drones in the in the sky so we, we've already done it um we did a trial with uh hospital trust in the west midlands going mm -hmm. from Coventry to uh, to rugby um, and we did about 1,900 kilometers over three months um, and that was looking at sort of specific blood use cases 
um, mm. and medical delivery use cases. And then we brought in a much bigger aircraft, uh, actually about a month ago. It's about 52 kilograms. And this is this is a three meter wingspan aircraft. Um, so, you know, it can be the length of some cars, essentially. It's a big, big drone and it can carry 15 kilograms of payloads. Um, and that's the sort of drone that we're going to see in the middle mile of logistics, I would say, um, taking place even more so by the end of this year, but more routinely next mm. year. Um, so, you know, uh, the the onset of drones day to day is is not tens or or fifty years away. It's uh, it's months, if not a couple of years away, in the UK. Amazing. Oh, it's so exciting. Um, a bit of a shift now, actually. You mentioned about just how much work goes into uh, running your own business. How do you balance your personal life with the demands of, of running Skyfarer? Uh, what personal life? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it, does, it, it's, it swings and roundabouts with that. It, does, it subsided substantially, especially for the first few years. Um, it was, you know, get up at get up at seven and then work until 11 p.m. or even later. You know, it was really long, long days and not many weekends. Um, and I don't advocate that because it's it's very tiring and you can get to a point of, of collapse, really, which, you know, to be honest, has happened. Um, so learning to listen, uh, listen to your brain and your body about where your where your mental state is and looking after your um, your mental health is something that I've kind of had to learn the hard way over these past six years. Um, but it's very difficult to do at the start when you're, when you're starting a new aspirational and innovative business, because ideally you need a lot of people to, to run that business and do various different things, but there's just you, or there's just you and a few other people. So you're having to do a, a broad set of tasks and jobs and switch your mind from looking at financials to doing operational engineering technical activities for example um, and that's a difficult thing to get used to but um, with it comes growing pains and through those challenges I strongly believe that you do you do learn um, and you know your, your your tissue gets stronger just like your you know your brain uh, grows you know and, and and activates new neurons you're you're learning constantly even through those challenges and those um, those difficult times so I definitely feel a lot more resilient than I did when I when I started the business, even a few years ago. Yeah. Um, and I feel a lot more, I guess, grown up, um, even for a, a 27 year old. A lot of people say that I've got a very old head on me. Uh, and that's because I've just chucked myself right in the deep end and, and had to be, I guess, a lot, a lot more grown up than um, a, a lot of people would be at my age, mm -hmm. I think. Mm. It sounds like you it sounds like you were quite close to well, you mentioned that you did at some point collapse. How do you now keep yourself in check? So having experienced that, having experienced the 7 a.m. until 11 p.m. Um, working until you're completely um, burnt, how do you now keep yourself? Um, how are you strict with yourself, Elliot? So uh, I, I try to stick to work days now. So um, evenings to not work and relax are very important. Yeah. Um, also having routines around that. So exercise also is very important. Um, and, and I actually advocate napping. Um, it's, it's so overrated. Just if you can do a 10, 15 minute power nap, it just absolutely revitalizes you. And in even drinking a coffee, before the nap and then having a nap you feel so amazing afterwards it's unbelievable um just that you know can you know reset your brain and let you digest some of the difficult things that you're trying to to learn and put together um that for me personally has helped um but also relying on others so handing off responsibility has been a difficult thing for me to do over the past couple of years but we now have um a team that i'm super super proud of um, within areas of flight operations, technology development, business operations, um, finance, HR, all these different, you know, standard business areas. Um, I'm now able to focus on what I should be doing as a CEO and running the business and strategizing the business and looking at financials. Um, and then, uh, you know, other people in the business have responsibility um, that I completely trust to go and do that. So, um, yeah, we, we're moving in from being a startup to a growing SME now, which is scary, 
Um, but also I know that I'm not alone. You know, we've got a, an executive team and a management team and a board that really believes in this vision um, that, that started five years ago that um, is going to help me and help the business get to where it needs to be. Mm. Yeah, no, that's amazing. I love your tip with the coffee um, and relinquishing control. Yeah, which is which is a difficult thing for business owners to do because it was it was all your responsibility to start off with. So amazing, amazing uh, learnings there and, and key takeaways. Um, what has been your biggest learning, would you say? Oh, there's been so many. Um, I think. I think there's, there's, there's quite a few there, so. One thing I mentioned was um, I I was very bad at public speaking, and I, I still don't think I'm very good at it to be honest. Um, but it's something that I have to do, and and I guess CEOs and, and leadership figures really have to be able to speak to um, the team and also the wider team, and then externally to partners, investors, and things like that. Um, I think the biggest thing that I that I learned with that is people people intently want to listen to you. I think I've, all, I've always been quite self-conscious about why would anyone want to listen to me speak? There's nothing interesting that I can say. It's quite negative. But, but really, when you're up there and you're talking, that's your time to talk. And you have to remember that people there are, are there to listen to you and they're intently interested in what you have to say. So be confident with what you've got to say um, and, and just, just focus on the message, really. Um, but, you know, still to this day, I still get... Uh, I still get anxious about these things, but I think it's I think it's kind of normal. But there was a point where, you know, I would just forget how to breathe when I'm studying in front of people because I'm just thinking about it way too much. But um, being confident in your expertise in what you do um, is absolutely is absolutely vital and just run with it really. I love that. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. I think that's really important um, that there is um, the opportunity to not hold ourselves back mm. with, our, with our limiting beliefs or with our beliefs around a certain situation. So that is that is fantastic. Thank you. So my, this brilliantly leads on to our last question, which is, where do you see yourself in five years and any words of advice for other business owners who, who are looking to grow? Oh, on a beach would be nice um I think I, there's a, there's certain milestones that I want to get the business to I'm I'm kind of conscious that um you know there's at a, at a certain point when the business gets to a certain size I think you need to be ready to hand over to people that know how to run a business at that size and to scale it from that point mm -hmm. um and I'm, I'm fully open um I'm fully open to that I think that's quite a kind of quite important that that's that that's the case um so i think within five years i'd like to be in a position where i'm focusing on innovation rather than growing um an sme um mm -hmm. hopefully with quite a lot of employees um because what i think what i've found is i'm i'm quite interested in the early stages of the business rather than big business and corporations and things like that um so looking at the next step for skyfarer be it you know, looking at more longer range operations like hub to hub logistics or, you know, going going above the sky and looking at, you know, space technology, which is what I did my master's in, is, is, is quite exciting. Focusing on innovation uh, rather than business as usual personally is what I think I'm good at and what I like to do. Going from idea to startup is, is something. So I'm quite excited about the idea of being an entrepreneur um, within Skyfair, uh, the business that I've created. But there's a long way to go before we get there. The business has got a lot of milestones over the next few years and we've got some exciting things coming up, even over the next few months, actually. Um, and I'm really keen to get it to that point. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, I think in five years we should, what year would that be? Yeah, so. 2028. Yeah, by that point, you know, we should be having routine um, uh, hub and spoke networks of operations with drones that will be, serving society day in and, and day out. And that's kind of the vision that I want to see realised. Amazing. Fantastic. And any words of advice for any other business owners looking to grow or looking to start? So if that's something that you that really gives you energy starting a business, that actually is um, one of the most difficult things for people to do, just taking that first step. So yeah, any words of advice? 
I think um, you as a person is more important than the idea that you have. Um, because a lot of people have ideas um, and a lot of people don't fulfill and turn those ideas into something that's real because it seems a little bit daunting. Um, but you have to make a start. And the person that makes a start is you. Um, and you need to have the drive to take it from idea to start up. Um, but also realizing that you, 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 you will never know absolutely everything. Um, there's always going to be an expert that knows more than you about one particular thing. So be proactive, seek those experts, get support, get feedback, and just keep putting one foot in front of the other, no matter what. Absolutely fantastic. What a way to end. What a, what, what a uh, bit of advice to, uh, to finish on. Um, I think that is fantastic. The power is within us, Elia. I love it. Thank you so much for coming on to Business Spotlight, sharing your journey, sharing your business insights and ideas and advice. Um, I cannot wait to share this with our wider community and look forward to speaking to you again in the near future. Thanks, Elliot. Thanks for the invite. Thank you. Thank you.